Welcome to another Z-Hut tutorial. Normally I do tutorials on photography or Arduino, but today we're going to combine the two and use the Arduino with a photo gate, or also known as a photo interrupter, to completely control the camera and flash for doing high speed photography. Now this photo gate I built myself, it's just PVC pipe. There's an infrared LED on this side and an infrared transistor on this side. Now, if you were going to be doing water drop photography, you probably wouldn't want this big photo gate, but what you can do is get one of these, and uh, I'll zoom in, show a picture here in a moment of it closer. This is just a photo interrupter too, but it's a small one, and you just hold your eyedropper, whatever you're using for making your water drops right above it, and it just plugs in here and hooks right up to the Arduino, no change in any of the programming. The only difference between these two is the gap between them. That's the only difference. So, <clears throat> what I have done is I've repurposed an old infrared remote control to completely control the Arduino so I don't have to reach over and push buttons and stuff. And I have it set up so I can change how long between when it senses an object in the photo gate for how long it takes before the flash is triggered. Now for the demonstration of this, um, means I'm in the studio, I don't want to be breaking glass or having water going all over. So just for the demonstrating how it works, I'm just going to use a rubber ball so nothing's going to get wet. So what we'll do is first, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how it all works. Then we'll take the um, Arduino over to the bench and I'll zoom the camera in on it and I'll uh, walk through the circuitry with you a little bit. And with that, um, go ahead and fire up the camera. Turn on the flash. And also, as you can see, I have a light here because when you normally do this, you're going to want the room completely dark. So because I'm shooting a video, I got to have lights on, but the, it'll still work. It just, the pictures that are taken when the lights are on ain't going to work. So what I have is this little light here, which is also hooked to a relay connected to the Arduino. So when I start the process by pushing this button, and I'll show you after a moment, the light will shut off. So it gives you enough time between when you push the button to maneuver and when you drop it, you can see the flash. I actually have the delay set at zero. And so it would get the picture I found at this height, a delay of about 200 milliseconds right about in there. And this also, when I push the button on the remote, it also triggers the camera and I have it in bulb mode. And you can also adjust on uh, <clears throat> the Arduino how long to keep the shutter open. So let's say, you know, you're gonna start take a picture and you don't do anything. There, the camera just triggered or the shutter open, I mean, but I'm not gonna trigger it. And I have it set for about 10 seconds, if I remember right. And if nothing happens, everything comes back on and the shutter closes. But I'll start it again. Light goes out, camera shutter opens. Bam. Um, I think that pretty much is all that um, we need to do. I'll give you just a quick look at how it worked. What we'll do next is I'll unhook this and put it over on the bench and zoom the camera in. And we'll go through how the circuitry works. And then after that, we'll get on the computer and I'll give you a run through on the code. You now this code, the wiring schematic for everything and the list of the parts and where to get them if you don't have them, will all be on the website at the link below. So you can go there and you can copy and paste the code or I'll also have a link on there so you just download the sketch and just open it up in uh, your Arduino IDE. All right, well, I'll see you in just a moment at, uh, at the bench and we'll take a look at the circuitry. Okay, let's take a closer look at the circuitry now. Uh, to start with, I said at the beginning of the video I'd show you a closer picture of the photo interrupter. The little one for um, using for like water drop photography and water co um, drop collision photography. And those are pretty cool pictures if you've uh, never checked them out. Just do a search online. There's lots of them out there. 
Uh, the only thing I haven't done to this yet is hook up some RCA plugs on here because that's what I did with the big photo gate so that I can disconnect it and hook this one up and because you don't have to change nothing with the program you just plug one in unplug the other one plug the other one in and you are good to go so um, let's take a look here oh got some junk on there so what we got is two cables here and one's for the camera and one's for the flash and I labeled them with little tags here beans they both use the same plug you um, don't want to accidentally plug the wrong one in you know the camera one into the flash it won't hurt it it just um, it'll trigger things backwards and actually your flash would keep triggering because the bulb mode it would keep going for 10 seconds so label them if they have the same plug if they got different plugs and you don't really have to worry about it now from them cables it comes into the board right here and I got it rubber banded at the end so they don't pull out of the board I got um, right here are two optical isolators and these are almost identical to a photo gate the only difference is is they're sealed so that you can't interrupt the beam so what this does is there's no physical connection between the camera the flash and the Arduino board because when the power comes through comes through the resistor here and these are two 330 ohm resistors it turns the the light on inside there and that opens the transistor to allow the maximum amount of current to flow through and that's how you trigger the camera and the flash and it's completely isolated so if anything happens you get a voltage spike or something you ain't damaging you know a thousand dollar camera and <laughs> it wouldn't be too happy if that happened so you are going to want to use these and they are dirt cheap um i got a package of 20 of them i think it was like three dollars and there'll be a, a link on the website to find those if you don't have them so then next we got the relay here and that just goes to uh, a plug that you plug your little light in and then the other end just plugs into the wall and that's so that you have some light when you're working and it automatically turns that light off once you're ready to take a picture and that comes in and I used a transistor on the board to help trigger it because depending on how much power you're pulling the pin itself sometimes will trigger it but not always so what I did is use the pin to trigger the transistor and the amount of amperage you get off the board the 5 volt power connector on there is more than what you get off the pins the pins are like 20 milliamps or something like that it's not that much so and the transistor is just a 2n2222 very common anything similar will work any any NPN that's even remotely similar will work and then I've got another transistor down here and what this one does is it turns the LED backlight on the display off and on because like I said you don't want any light when you're taking these pictures because the light is what freezes the action and that's the light from the flash so I just got another one here and hooks up um, on the, the backlight hookup there's a little jumper back there and you just disconnect that and you hook up through the board of the transistor so you can turn the turn the display off and on and the display is a 16 character by two line and it's a serial you are going to want a serial because it only uses two pins on your board if you use the other one you're using i think it's something like seven or eight pins and you'd be running out of room on your board real quick and as you can see on the display here it has the delay del and that's how long that um, it'll be before after the photo gates triggered that's how long before the flash is triggered because you want to give the item a little time to to get down and break or splash in water whatever you're trying to get a picture of before the flash goes off and next is IRT and what that is is the infrared transistor threshold the uh, <laughs> the value has to drop I got it set at about 800 right now so the value would have to drop below 800 for the, the photo gate to trigger everything then the bulb timer that's just how long your shutter is open and well the maximum amount of time your shutter will stay open because once the camera is triggered the flash goes off and a few milliseconds later the shutter automatically closes 
And if nothing happens in that time, so when you started the trigger, if, and I got it set at, let's see, 10,000 microseconds, so that's 10 seconds. So if nothing happened, and I can trigger it right now, it takes a second or two, then the relay turns the light off and the backlight goes off. But if I don't trip, trip the photo gate, you'll see here in just a moment, it'll automatically just reset and everything will come back on. See, there it goes. And then, so you're not having to reach over, twist dials, push buttons. I just repurposed an old remote. And in the sketch, it's all in there on how to map this. And when we get to the computer, I'll show you quick how to do it. It's super easy, super easy. Any infrared remote will work. And uh, you just need the infrared receiver, which is this item right here. And I robbed this out of an old, I think it was a VCR. A VCR DVD player, if you've got a junk one laying around, you won't need to order one of these. You can just uh, use the one out of there. And also the, um, the uh, infrared transistor and the infrared LED I got out of the same VCR because in the internals um, where mechanisms move, it uses optical sensing in there. And um, you'll see them. They're super easy to spot. And there's two LEDs. One's clear. And the other is black and they're on the inside and there's no reason there'd be a normal LED in there. So that's the only one that you'll find. Oh, let's see. That's all. Oh, then we got one more thing. I do have one push button on here. And I didn't bother setting it up with the remote because it's something you don't use very often. But it's for setting up and you want to know, you just push it and hold it for a second. And it pops up on the screen here, IRT monitor. Now what this is doing right now is it's monitoring the value of the photo gate. And I got the photo gate just off to the side, so I'll put my hand in there. And you can see the number drops. It's on about 30 right now. And I take my hand out of there and it goes back up to uh, the upper 900s. And this is just for monitoring. So you can figure out what you know trigger level. Because when you set your threshold for the trigger, you want it just like maybe 10 or 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 or 20 below what your monitor shows you. Because you want it to trigger real easy when something drops, drops between there. So I think that's about it on the circuit board itself. Um, see, oh, I made these up myself. I just had some ribbon cable out of an old, um, I think it was a fax machine or scanner printer, one of the two. And I just put header ends on the end and makes it so your board doesn't flop all over. It looks nice and neat. Super easy to make as long as you know, you're know you good at soldering. Otherwise, you can just use you know your regular jumper wires or the, the flat board ones. Um, I use a lot on there because I like everything to look nice and neat. So <clears throat> with that, we'll jump over onto the computer. And I'll bring up the sketch and uh, I'll run through it a little bit. I ain't going to go through every little detail in the sketch because it is heavily, heavily commented because it's, it's a long sketch. But mainly I'm just going to go over on how to program or <coughs> map your remote so you can program it into the Arduino. And it's really easy. I built it right into the sketch. Um, you just, after you're done using it, you comment it out with the two backslashes because you don't need to have the serial monitor running. It just slows things down when you're uh, using this for the photography because you can run it off the battery or I just simply right now, I got it plugged into my laptop because the laptop is sitting right next to me. So, all right, well, I'll see you in just a second at the computer. We'll bring up the, the sketch and we'll go through it. And... Okay, so here's the sketch. Now, before we get into mapping the remote, there's just a couple things up here to go through first. Um, now, there's three libraries we've got in here. We've got the wire.h. Now, that one's already included in your Arduino IDE, so you won't need to download that. But you will need to download this one right here, the Liquid Crystal I2C, and you'll also need to download the um, irremote.h. Um, the links for these will both be on the website. Just look in the description below, click on the link, and it'll take you right to the page for this project on my website. And you'll find all the information on uh, these downloads, parts, schematics, 
and a little more in-depth description, written out description tutorial on how all this works. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to scroll down here. And first of all, we you want to go to this line right here, the serial.begin, and I got it commented out. So you'll just remove that. And we go down. Okay, here's the other one. This one here will print serial print the value. So we'll uncomment that and then simply upload it to the board. And it'll take a moment here. There we go, now it's uploading. All right, it's done uploading. All right, let's make sure I'm in the right spot on here. Okay, this is where we want to start. Now here, right here, is one of the, the values from the remote. And this is actually the one that starts the sequence for taking the picture. And down here are all the codes for changing the values. Now, let me grab the remote here, and you can see I got the serial monitor going over here, so I'm just going to push a button, and you see there a number comes up. And I push a different button, a different number will come up. Now, if I push a button and hold it down, every button, no matter what button I push, once I hold it down, it'll first give you a value but then it gives you this value here that's a repeat value and for every button if you hold it down you'll get that same value so once you figure that out you'll have to go through and you can see I've got here's that value here and here it is again you'll have to change all of these ones to that repeat value and all you got to do is once you've uncommented those two lines in the sketch is just point the infrared remote at your infrared receiver on the breadboard and just push a button. I usually press it two, three times just to make sure I'm getting the code for the button I want. And then to find out the repeat code, just push any button down, hold it down, and you get the repeat code. So what you do, and I got it commented, this one here is for the, the delay of the flash. So this would be the button here if I was going to increase the value. So you'd pick a button on your remote, push it, copy and uh, paste that right in over top mine then you'll have to replace this one and this is just your repeat and you don't have to change anything with this button numbers and stuff just leave that alone because what that does is it counts and lets it know what button you previously pushed so when it goes through the repeat it knows which one to repeat so then I got here here's for the <clears throat> decrease the flash delay and then we go down here here's for the camera bulb timer again there's the value and just pick you know what buttons you want to use in your remote this is super easy and you'll just have to go through and there's the trigger value the threshold and just change the values and that's for the push button okay yeah those are the only ones you got to change everything else in the sketch I would leave it alone unless you really know what you're doing you know you want to play around with a little experiment go ahead I have heavily commented everything so you should be able to figure out what it all does and uh, well, like this one here all the other ones are plus or minus one this is the camera bulb timer and I have it set up to increase or decrease by half a second because I didn't really see any need going, you know, exact milliseconds. <clears throat> but uh, if you wanted to change this, you know, increase it by a second or decrease it by a second. You know, you just change these numbers where the plus and minus are. Um, with that, there isn't really anything else to go over. Like I said, I would leave the rest of the program alone. You just have to come in and change your, your numbers here for the value. And... Um, there is more information um, on all this on the link to the website below, so please check that out. And uh, I would appreciate uh, you give this video a like, 
So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this tutorial up. Uh, I hope it was helpful, and if you get this built and take some pictures, go ahead and uh, submit them on the Facebook page. Um, the link for that will be in the description below too, or there's a link to it on the website as well. So thanks for joining us here at the Z-Hut. Hope you have a great day.